Today we're going to be checking out the future of digital night vision performance with the ADNV GF20 and the GF31 which fuse together a very impressive digital night vision image together with thermal which is going to provide unmatched detection capabilities bringing you the best of both worlds together in real time. I'm really excited to share some info about this tech with you but before we go any further I want to disclose that Goodnight Gear is my website and we are the first US retailer to offer ADNV's products and if you want to support my channel and the work that I do you can use the discount code us10 to save 10 percent if you do decide to pick up this device or any other digital night vision products from goodnight gear the two units we're going to be checking out are the gf20 monocular and the gf31 binocular the GF20 has an adjustable focus, a built-in IR illuminator, a thermal sensor, an aviation socket, a power and control knob, and on the back we've got the eyepiece, the diopter adjustment, and a few basic controls. The GF31 shares a lot of the same features, including adjustable focus, a single thermal sensor, built-in IR, a few extra controls on top of the device, a connected power cable, and on the other side you've got your dual eyepieces. Both units are powered by a counterweight style battery pack that connects via the aviation socket and runs off of two 18650 batteries which can power the setup for approximately 18 hours. The GF20 comes with a high quality dovetail mount which you can use to mount the monocular over either eye and here it is connected with the L4G24 mount. The GF31 is a bridged unit with the dovetail adapter and one or both can also be lifted up and out of the way if needed. The display is a 800 by 600 OLED and there's four different viewing modes for these digital thermal devices and we'll touch on those in a few minutes. For the most part the UIs are pretty similar and on the display you can see a built-in digital compass, the frames per second, the remaining battery life, and inside the menu you can turn on and off the IR, adjust the brightness, record photo and video, turn on and off Wi-Fi and adjust the contrast. With the GF31, there's a single thermal sensor that will display the thermal overlay over the right eye, but when you are looking through both monoculars, your brain will be able to process a fused image. These units have a 40 by 30 degree field of view, which offers a pretty similar viewing experience to analog, and we've gone more in depth about the performance of the one inch second generation high performance CMOS solid state image sensor found inside these devices on a review of the ADNV P2 digital night vision monocular a few weeks ago and I've tested it out against pretty much every digital night vision device on the market and there's no doubt that this is the best digital night vision sensor currently available. Even their two-thirds inch sensor absolutely destroys the performance of the Psyonix Opsin and this one inch sensor outperforms Gen 2 Plus analog night vision and comes very close in performance to Gen 3 analog. Even in areas with ultra low moonlight and dense canopy coverage, the device can still perform quite well without the need for relying on supplemental IR lighting and the combination of good low light performance, wide field of view, and fast refresh rates make this ideal for rapid movements and navigation. There are a few instances where supplemental IR lighting might be useful, so it is nice to have that capability built in, but for the most part, you probably won't need it unless you're indoors and very far away from light. Both of these units come with a 640 by 512 thermal sensor and identification range for a human is going to be about 234 meters, recognition range about 468 meters and detection up to 935 meters and for something like a vehicle you'd be looking at ranges closer to 1200 meters. Tonight we're going to be testing this out with a waxing crescent moon with 37% illumination and we'll be exploring some open areas exposed to direct moonlight as well as some very dark areas under dense canopies that are pretty much completely shaded from moonlight and this footage is being recorded through my Google Pixel smartphone. There's four different viewing modes including your basic night vision mode with no thermal overlay, a white hot mode, a full fusion mode, and a red outline mode. With the white hot mode, we're seeing mostly an image from the thermal sensor, which is going to be useful for long distance scenarios where detection is your main priority. And as you can see, warmer subjects really pop out and there's a lot of contrast between them and the black background, but it is going to be tougher for you to use this to navigate with and it's not as useful for close range. If you are going to be stationary or scanning different sectors and want to make sure that you see the enemy before they see you, this would probably be the best mode to use. The thermal fusion mode is my favorite for most scenarios because it combines the digital night vision sensors image together with the thermal fusion overlay, which really broadens the capabilities of this device, giving you the best of both worlds when it comes to navigation and detection. And with this mode, you get great contrast with the thermal as well as a very detailed look at your surroundings and the colors are 
are very visually stunning in this mode. Even though there's a lot of colors present, the range is still exceptional and you're not going to have any issues detecting people many, many hundreds of meters away. Finally, we've got the outline mode, which is another thermal fusion option, which utilizes both the digital night vision sensors with a very minimal red hot outline. The red hot thermal outline makes it very easy for you to track and identify targets and provides exceptional contrast with the black and white digital night vision feed, which is optimal for navigation. There's a lot of benefits to running a thermal fusion device that make it a very useful tool and really put this technology at the forefront of night vision. While they are expensive units, they're not too much different in price from running Gen 3 tubes, especially if you're considering a bino setup. And in my opinion, the capabilities of the GF20 and the GF31 thermal fusion units are are far superior. With analog, you're gonna get a real-time image and a slightly taller field of view, but the low light performance is pretty comparable and the perks that come along with the thermal overlay make it far more useful for a greater range of applications. In general, thermal is great for detection, but it's less useful for short range and night vision is pretty much the opposite and it's good for short range navigation, but detection can prove to be a real challenge because of the lack of contrast, but you're also gonna have a very tough time if you're trying to rely on thermal to navigate alone. Fusing this combination together gives you the highest level of situational awareness at night and the best understanding of your environment. The thermal overlay can also help reduce eye strain compared to using traditional night vision alone as it provides a lot of contrast when a heat signature is detected and anybody looking to have the best night vision tech available should absolutely consider a setup like this one. Let us know your thoughts on these down in the comments and if you want to learn more about these products you can check them out on goodnightgearshop.com and make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll have some more really exciting night vision content that we'll be sharing in the near future.